Good morning, everybody. I am so excited to be doing this, but I am seeing you all come on one at a time, and I just want to sit and chat with you. But that's not what we're here for. So we're going to just jump right in. Uh, as Jamie said, you if you got your packet, you got these two sheets. And what we're going to be working on are the grids at the back. Uh, they're too big to show under there. And, and if you didn't get your packet and you can't print them off, no worries. Just grab two sheets of paper and make yourself a grid with four sections. Okay. And that will work just fine as well. As she said, this is a drawing class. And so everybody needs a pencil, which I don't seem to have. Okay, hopefully that gave everybody a chance to get a pencil. And we'll start with the first square in your first grid. So hopefully everybody can see that. We're going to start with in your pattern, in your pattern here, we're going to start with the hibiscus flower. Um, so everybody find the middle of your square and kind of mark it with your finger. And from that middle, you're going to make an arch, a double arch, and stop about uh, three quarters of an inch from the top. And then you're going to make a little stamen there. And then from there, you're going to do sort of a soft triangle into that corner. I like to work in a square but it'll, because it will help you make your uh, flower symmetrical. And then you're going to go on this side all the way to the edge like we did here. And then we're going to go this way all the way to the edge. And then on this one, we're going to go around, but not include that stamen there. So we're going to go around like that. And then your last petal, like that. You just drew your first hibiscus. Yay for you. So we're going to go on, although I do want to note right now that if you're going to paint I always do this because once you start painting or using colored pencils or markers, the tendency is just to fill it all in. I like to mark where my whites are going to be left. It just adds interest to your flower. So we'll do that right now on your pattern. So your first corner should be filled in and now we're going to move to the next Square, which is going to be a daffodil. I love, I think daffodils are my favorite spring flower. So again, find your middle, kind of up off to the left. You're going to do sort of a squished oval with sort of raggedy edges. Then from that squished oval, you're going to do two little lines like that. And then you're going to make a bell shape. So now you're kind of covering the very middle of here. Then from that bell shape, you're going to make two angel wings. We're going to go very fast on these, so don't be frustrated about that. These are just for fun and practice. So how are we doing? Terry, are we caught up? 
All right, then we're gonna make a couple of more <laughs> petals down here. Again, sort of the same shape, kind of pointy at the end. And then a couple of petals up here. And as they go further away from you, they're gonna be shorter around the flower. And there's our daffodil. We're going to talk about details uh, at the end. So we have questions that we put in the chat. You can put your questions in the chat and we'll try to keep up with those. Again, we're moving along quickly. All of these flowers are in your pattern. Um, and this is my very first coloring page I've ever done. So that's pretty fun. Uh, we're going to do tulips next. I love to do these. We're going to do several of them. So these are sort of fantasy tulips, not very realistic. So just do several different sizes of horseshoes, sort of coming together at the top like that. And then inside your horseshoes, you're going to do an upside down V tucked in the middle. Then you're going to connect that V and this is kind of a fun detail. You just put a pointed at the top, pointed at the bottom. Depending how you color these, they are really fun to do a whole bunch of them together. On each side, pull in another So there's our tulips. Now, if you're going to do stems, I figure you can all see the stems in the picture, but you would want to make sure it's got a pretty substantial top on it. So there's our tulips. We are just flying. How's everybody doing on the chat? Nobody says anything. We're just that either here. means everybody's really far behind or you're just keeping up like <laughs> rock stars. Okay, so now we're going to do these sort of pointed, they really are poinsettia leaves, uh, but in the pattern, I painted these blue. Let me show you. So we're going to do those blue, pointy kind of poinsettias, but certainly at Christmas. You could do these. So just keep it so that you're doing the one that is directly in front of you. That will keep keep them pretty uh, straight. And you just keep going until you don't have any room anymore. There's not a correct number of petals. Again, it's kind of pointy at the middle and pointy at the top. You can put them really close together or far away from each other. Someone said their hibiscus is a four leaf clover. <laughs> so again, this would be the time before I do any coloring that I would put in some highlight whites. And you think, oh, I'll remember to do that, but no, I never do. I just get carried away with myself and end up coloring the whole thing in. So there's that flower. We're gonna move on to the next one. Uh, we're gonna do roses. So imagine Chelsea's cinnamon rolls kind of flat flattened out like that. And these can go any direction. We're going to slow down a little. All right. So you can make these really little. 
These are a great thing to put in the corner of a note or a letter, really easy. And then we're going to do the same thing we did on the daffodil, sort of a starter. For those of you who are new and joining in, it's important to use a pencil on this. She's just using a pen so that you can see how it works. Okay, then we're going to not quite do as big of a bell as we did on the daffodil. And then we're going to bring in sort of a side petal on either side, doesn't matter. And then on the bottom of a rose is kind of a rough. And then they just can all attach to the same stem. Easy, easy, easy. I'll let everybody kind of get caught up and I'm gonna show you the details of the first four that we've done. Katie, good job. She can see all of you and I can't see any of you. That would be, that would be Sadie's drawings and she's not following the rules. Oh, Sadie. Sadie, you and I both know you're my granddaughter. You don't have to follow any rules. Okay, so we've done, where's the hibiscus? Oh, I already showed you that one. Okay, so here is the daffodil finished out. So do you see where I put the lines? I'm gonna show you how to do that when we finish all of our drawings on the hibiscus. This is a finished out tulip. Aren't they cute? This is the finished out roses. Again, you can finish these out with markers or crayons or um, watercolor or whatever you have. Colored pencils, that's the blue flowers. Okay, so let's keep going. Everybody caught up, Chelsea? Yes, now everyone's asking for cinnamon rolls. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to do these. I love these. Okay, so you're gonna do several kind of bigger ovals, not quite as squished as the cinnamon rolls. This kind of reminds me of a seed pod. Then you're gonna pretend that that is a part of a circle. So make it as much of a circle as you can. My friend Don thinks these look like pin cushions. And her granddaughter thinks they look like bumblebees. So then we're going to follow the curve around and do two stripes. These again are sort of a fantasy flower. We're doing great on time. And then in the middle of these, I just like to put little, these can go way up, they can be curvy, just whatever you want, but then I sort of ground them into the middle of the, with just a little comma stroke. And when those are done, oh, let me show you what I do for leaves on these. So those are obviously not real leaves, but they just sort of make them kind of fun. So when they're filled in, you would use a darker color for this middle. And then again, you can just use any color. And then on these little round ones, I just color in the whole leaf. Okay, let's go to the next one. These again are kind of a 
funny, weird flower. Imagine a rectangle. This is sort of a techno daisy, I guess. I don't know what you'd call it. And then put a frame around it. So I think you should be on square number six. And then just some funny little petals. These are really fun in a, in a project where you've got a whole lot of flowers. And then this one, I put these funny little petals just sticking straight out. Leaves, I guess. And when they're done, they look like that. So those are different. And then we've got just one more. Is that right? Have we done all of them? Yeah. Okay, so we have just the one left. These, again, put maybe three middles. And this one, instead of just going pedal, 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 we're going to do like a propeller. So three long petals. That wasn't very symmetrical. Kind of the same distance apart. And then you're going to fill in. So this one does always have six petals. But as you can see on mine, they aren't always symmetrical. They don't always, but that's the fun of these. And I've got a couple that I finished out differently here. So do you see in the middle of these, I just added a second line. I left the middles white. And then on this one, I did stripes and polka dots. So we've got uh, three of the propellers in stripes and three in polka dots. But the sky is the limit on what you do with those and how you finish these out. So um, now I'm going to show you on the side of your grids. You've got a line. I'm going to show you two different styles of writing. One is the cursive that's at the bottom of your coloring page. My cursive writing is not very pretty, but a lot of people really um, like this. And it's fun to do once you understand the uh, dynamics of how to do it. So I'm just going to do the word joy in cursive. And so the thing is, is you want to make your cursive as loopy as you can. Like if you were going to do an R, you just loopy and you can put a little. And then, okay, this is the important part about this uh, alphabet. Every time you have a downstroke, so this is an upstroke, this is a downstroke you do a double line. And then this is an upstroke. I go to here, this is a downstroke. This is an upstroke. This is a downstroke. Yeah, so, can you move a little closer to the... Everybody see that? So here we're going up and this is a downstroke and it does not matter what side of the letter you go down. I've got a little bit more room on that side. So I'm going to go down on that side here. I'm going up and out here. I'm going down all the way. 
So this one, this is a downstroke. So I'm going to start there. Close it in up there, up. Again, when it starts to go down, you just taper it off around and then another downstroke here. Mm. So then, there we go. Then you can color that part in or you can just do it in black, fill that in black, depending on the size of your uh, lettering. I've done these really big um, and really small. They work either way. But I know a lot of you out there have much better cursive writing than I do. I do mine up and down. A lot of you do yours at an angle. That's just great. Just use whatever is natural to you. It looks just beautiful either way. You can see once that's filled in. Uh, so that that's one style of writing. So take your other sheet. And uh, if you've got your bookmark in the packet, let me grab that. Well, I don't have my bookmark, but it looks like this. I'm going to show you how to do um, this type of writing. And this is generally what I like to do. It's easy for me. It's kind of my own alphabet. I did uh, a piece every year in 2019. I did a scripture every, every day. And um, so this was the alphabet that I used. It's the most natural for me. But I'm going to show you how to do that. I use these, uh, the brand name is a Toya. If you've done any calligraphy, these are my absolute favorite pens. They've got earth tones and they've got a brighter set. Uh, this is the earth tone set and I particularly love it that it has this Dijon, which I'm gonna show you why I use it all the time. So I'm gonna show you how I do this lettering. So these Atoya, calligraphy pens have two ends. They have this skinny end and they have this wider end. And these tips last a long time. They stay uh, very sharp. So again, we'll just do the word joy. And a lot of you, of course, don't have a calligraphy pen right now, so you might just wanna watch. I'm going to show you on this. This was actually a trial run on the bookmark that you got. And I got to the end of the page and ran out of room. So yes, it does still happen to me. Um, I don't know The COVID threw me off or something. I don't know what. So I'm going to show you how I use this, um, this, this color. So I just do, you can shadow it on either side of the letter, but in essence, it's a shadow. So if my light was coming from this direction, the shadow would be on this side. So I would just shadow this one side. And then I use these markers. This is ones that I just got uh, from Amazon Prime. Um, they're called uh, Energel Liquid Gel Ink, and they're a V uh, needle tip. Uh, they're a V5, that's the size of the needle tip. Um, these are what I use on all of my projects now. They give a real fine, beautiful line. I'm going to use a little bit thicker one here so you can see. But then I just go around and outline the whole thing. And if you look close at the bookmark that you got for Bev's verse, which I this loved Bev, hearing her. This is a great verse for us right now. God knew we needed this verse. And I just outline both the color part of the letter and the shadow part of the letter. 
and it just really makes that letter pop. So that is the uh, instruction part of our class. If you'd like to stay on, I'm gonna show some resources, um, but honestly, you won't hurt my feelings if you need to go. Probably you've been drinking coffee and you literally do need to go. So um, feel free to drop out, but if you'd like to stay on, I'm gonna show you some of the resources that I wish I had known about a long time ago. Um, Terry says you should have Oh yes, I'm gonna go around to the other computer so everybody hold up your favorite flower. Oh, freaking girl. Mom, would you like Sadie to show the coloring book and pencils? In just a little bit. All right, thanks for joining us, everyone. Um, this portion, the first portion here, has been recorded, so we're gonna get that all set up and uploaded to YouTube so you guys can rewatch it later. We'll see you guys later. Bye, everybody. I hope everybody doesn't leave me. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple of things that have been fun for me during this time. And none of you can tell me you don't have any time to color. So these are some other just fun flowers. I think we can still see on the other camera. Just some fun little crazy flowers that I did. And uh, so you can just go any direction you want with these. One thing that I've really loved, I ordered my granddaughters in Michigan and myself the same color book. And we color, I color with one of them a day. Um, we try to do every day. I let them choose the pattern. And Sadie, do you have yours? Can you show the front of that one more time? Yes. There's a lot of them. If you're going to do a search for color books, just put color books with scripture. Um, I do try to to do that. Uh, I feel like it adds uh, depth to what you're doing and purpose to what you're doing. I can't find my Sadie one. Oh, it must still be in here. Yes. Okay, Sadie, can you hold yours up? So Sadie and I did these together. So you see we have the same pattern. Does Sadie have hers up? I don't know. Uh, people have asked me what the names of your pins are. So okay. Yes, mom, yeah. we have our Great. So Sadie and I spent, we spent about an hour together on FaceTime and I asked them what music they'd like to listen to and put, and they've been very kind to me. <laughs> so uh, they like, um, is it King and Country? Is that, that's a big one. So we talk, we sometimes don't talk, we listen to music, I find out how their day's going and what they've been doing and um, they go out alone in their bedroom and uh, we just have that time together. So that has been a really fun um, thing. Look for, look for books that have not a lot of detail. Some of the coloring books that are out are ridiculous. They would take you a month. And if I can't finish it in a session, it's not good. Um, Michaels also puts out this fabulous florals, lots of really fun flowers. They show you how to draw a pine cone, um, a dandelion, uh, just all kinds of really fun leaves. Um, it's called Fabulous Florals. It's a book that's out by Michaels. Uh, let's see. Also, I wanted to show you a a little gadget that I got, um, and I wish I'd have had this a long time ago. This is a light, remember the old light boxes? This is a light board. And the thing that is great about this is I just put my grid for my lines on there, and I put my paper over, and I don't have to draw any lines if I'm doing any kind of writing. So uh, there's three three levels of light 
but these are just really lightweight and it's like a clipboard, having a clipboard. But uh, that is a great resource. They just plug in and uh, that's a great resource. Let's see, I talked about the V5 gel pens. Uh, those are just really great to finish out your work. Um, I talked about the light board, pencil we'll show set. The stages of the flowers. Uh, oh yes, we can do some of the details. Um, watercolor sets, honestly, when you're just doing these flowers, you can use a, a Dollar Tree watercolor set. Um, you're not doing a lot of shading and uh, things like that. So um, feel free to mess around with watercolors if you've never done it before. Uh, it's a lot of fun to do that. What also, if you're looking for calligraphy pens again. What was that? What are the calligraphy if you're looking pens? for resources, I use Google Images. If I need to look, know what a hibiscus leaf looks like, I will just type in Google Images a hibiscus leaf and it'll show me lots of like a cartoon type of a leaf, a, real, a realistic leaf. Um, YouTube has great tutorials. I learned to draw this hibiscus on a YouTube tutorial. Um, it's easy step by step. They have ones that are for kids that you can do along with your kids. Really, really good information out there. That's a great resource for right now. Mom, mom, they're asking what the calligraphy pens are called. I typed them in the chat. Itoya, I-T-O-Y-A, double headers. All the information is in the chat. Uh, okay, so there's also a program, a, a app that I use now when I get a, uh, project finished. I I do these. Let me show you some of the projects. Oh, Sadie, will you hold up your um, colored pencil set? I ordered them a colored pencil set when I sent them the color book. Has she got it up there? It rolls up like a, a scroll, and then it's got 72 colored pencils. That's really good to have. And then when we're done with our session, she keeps out the ones that she's used and then sharpens them for her sister that's gonna use it the next time. So you always have sharp pencils. And I always try to keep my pencil sharp because um, you can just color better with a sharp pencil. It's a lot more enjoyable. So here are some different, I finished this one yesterday. I do verses for our church. We have a verse that we memorize as a church. This is the one that I finished yesterday. As you can see, I've got, um, Chelsea, you wanna put the big screen on my hands? Can okay. I do that? No, that's an Ian thing. Oh, that's an Ian thing. Um, so as you can see, I use uh, a lot of these little flowers. This one is a verse about a child, uh, whoever receives this child in my name. And I thought of colors, and so I made, flowers that look like crayons although my granddaughter Jaden says Ian they look to like you to the hand view. Ian can you change us to the hand view so they don't have to see me big there we go um, so I got some new ink I did this one in ink uh, dip pens and added some crazy silly flowers there so let me show you this one again since it's on the big screen um, so again, it's just the two lettering uh, styles that I showed you on this, on this piece. And then these are just prints that I have done at Walgreens. They're 10 cents a piece. If you order, uh, look for the sales for 10 cents a piece. Sometimes they're nine cents a piece. This one has some pretty fun little flowers. Those were really fun. Kind of a crazy flower. COVID, thank you. Um, we just lost my video. Uh oh, low battery. Mom, I'm also showing your cards too. Oh. Uh, versus of the. All right, we're getting a cord. I ran out of battery. Mom, I also wanted to show everybody 
the Inspire Bible is a journal Bible. It's also like a coloring Bible. So it's got, it's got coloring pages within. Yeah, those are fun. Uh, if you just like to doodle, Katie's done a really good job in hers. Hers are gorgeous. Okay, your hands are back up there. Okay. Okay, can we go back to the hand view? There we go. Okay, this one, the original, I did actually. You know, I'm really messed up. I don't know why. The original to this one is, uh, and that's what I wanted to t tell you about. The original of this is three feet by four feet. And I put it up on a cross that my brother made. The background, I used a tea bag to make it look weathered. Um, and I used a really big nib. Let me show you those. Oh, they're not here either. Um, so I use a program, an app called Scannable. And a lot of you know Sean and Terry. Sean was with us and he, he introduced me to this app. It's got a butterfly on it. And you just hover it. You take your phone and you just hover it over your piece. And I was standing on a ladder over this piece. And it just locks in the image and tidies it up. And then I can just send it to Walgreens and get four by six prints. It's an amazing app. It's an amazing app. It's a free download. But if you have ones that you want to make copies of um, for family or friends or something that you really like, uh, I really like to st st stick to scripture. That's what I've done to the, for the last two years is I stick, uh, stick pretty closely to um, what the verse says, uh, even if it makes no sense and seems out of context. I just want to handle God's word with integrity when I do these. So I'm going to uh, put these on the Facebook page. And if you'd like, all you have to do is click on that image and you can send it to Walgreens if you want to make prints of, of those. Uh, this is God's word. I didn't write it. He wrote it. Um, so it just gives you an opportunity to, to spread God's word. And I would love that. You never need my permission. If you're on Facebook with me, you never, ever need my permission to do that. You can just um, click on it and print it on your own printer, although printer ink is very expensive. I have found it's much cheaper to order prints. So what's the name of that app? It's called Scannable. S-C-A-N-N-A-B-L-E. It's blue and it's a butterfly. I actually it says, it says Evernote Scannable. It says what? Evernote, E V E R N O. Oh, Evernote scannable. Okay, that's good. I actually downloaded it onto a woman's phone in Hobby Lobby because we were having a little chat about it. And so yeah. I, I think. What's your, what's your screen name for Facebook if we want to follow you? Rochelle Van Rijn. Rochelle Van Rijn. No, Rochelle Henderson Van Rijn. Um, they want to know if you draw these on cardstock. Uh, I use, it depends on what medium I'm using. If most everything is going into my journals and those are nine by 12 uh, journals, Chelsea's going to go grab one. And I've switched to that because I'm 62 now and I can't stand to frame one more thing. It, I mean, at some point it's all going to burn. So I wanted, I wanted to leave my grandchildren a legacy. I have six grandchildren. And I've been filling, um, filling journals. My sister-in-law actually gave me my first one. And so, um, so each of, I'm hoping that each of my grandchildren will get a journal. So as you can see, I'll show you. The last one that I did was just, so it's just here in my journal. So I just hover my phone over that uh, with Scannable. And it captures that image, and I format it to a 2 3 format and just hit the button and send it to Walgreens. And uh, it happens so fast. But uh, the scannable app fixes the tilt. 
if you're not quite um, square uh, above your uh, project, it's really a document scanning. So make sure that it's set so that it will scan photos or so that you get good color. Um, but it really just sharpens up your picture. Even on ones that I've made mistakes, I feel like it just sort of almost corrects the mistakes in, in the project. So uh, that's been really fun. Uh, and then I put my feelings that I had for my grandkids when I was doing the project. 2016 was a very, very hard year for our family. My uh, mom uh, was with us and passed away in our living room on hospice, which was actually a really good experience, but um, we had some other losses that year, and uh, that's probably my most detailed work is, uh, unfortunately, your creativity comes out more in pain, I think, than in happiness, and uh, so that was a, a tough, a tough time, but it's always amazing when I'm doing scripture how God just hits me with something. Some somehow when I'm slowing down and I'm doing scripture, he just it's just a time of worship for me with um, with my Savior. And so that's been a great gift. In 2008, um, I had a severe. Uh, we went to the Amazon on a medical team in Peru, and I came home and had a severe onset of rheumatoid arthritis and. The doctor told me I'd probably be in a wheelchair in a year. And so I really mourned the loss of pen and ink at that point because I, it really hit my hands. Um, uh, my fingers all started to kind of go arthritic to the side. And so here I am 12 years later, praise God, I can still hold a pen. And so that's his gift uh, to me right now. And he would have given me the grace had it had not happened and I would be in a wheelchair. He would give me the grace to do that, but I'm just really thankful, so thankful I can still do this because when I pick up a pen, I return to joy, that's for sure. So I think that that's it. How are we doing on time? Oh, oh, Terry, yeah, you haven't shown them the progression. Oh, Terry Faulkner asked me to write down a list of all of the resources, including apps and stuff, and they will post that along with the video. So it'll have all the pens and all of the coloring books and the apps and whatnot. Okay, let me, I'm going to show this up to, to you upside down so I can get close to the flowers. But this is kind of, this is the watercolor and this is on actual watercolor paper. And if you had that pattern, um, you could you could trace it onto a piece of watercolor paper on that light board. But on this one, this is the one that I've been You're doing sideways. I know it's it's hard. I can't do it the other way on this phone. So I'll just show you up here. I think all of you can kind of see it. So this is just the um, this is just the uh, same cardstock that all of you have. I just finished this one out in in pencil, in colored pencil, and then a gel pen for the outline. But you don't need the outline on your pattern. It's already there. So Chelsea wanted me to show you the progression of these. They're kind of all mixed up. So here are the tulips just colored in. Are they there? Yeah. So that's without the outline, but look at how what a difference the outline makes. It's a huge difference. Again, you could go with any colors at all. On this, I did leave a little white without marking it. Oh, uh, the problem is your phone is... So it's sideways, you see how it's sideways? Mm -hmm. It's because the, the phone got turned. So just show them these sideways, like gotcha. this. Look, see, I can't even do it's it. It's harder than you realize. <laughs> and then it'll be right side up. Okay, sideways. Gotcha. Okay, oh, so there's the blue flowers. And there's the blue flowers with the detail. And again, these could be poinsettias very easily, easy, easy 
if you wanted to add something to a Christmas letter or something like that. And here are the, you look at now these, they kind of look like hamburgers, but they're actually pretty ugly without any details. But look at the difference when you put the details on that, huge difference. I felt like I was born again when I found a V5 gel pen because it makes such a difference. Uh, here's the roses. There's just colored in. And then after they're outlined, huge difference. I can't find the this one that's not finished. I don't know where it is. Oh, here's the. Okay, I, I'm going to show you, I think. Do we want the details? Do you want me to show you the details on a hibiscus or on a daffodil? Anybody come in on that? How many do we have left? 73. What? What is happening? Do the daffodil. Do the daffodil. All right. So again, there's a close up of the daffodil. Ronnie wants a hibiscus. <laughs> we'll do both, Ronnie, because I just love you both. Okay, so here we go on the hibiscus. That's a daffodil. I mean on the daffodil. If you have, even a black ballpoint pen really could give you the idea of this. I do a little cross hatching down here just uh, to give it some depth. Up here, I'm going to do a little... And this is a bigger pen than what I generally use. The one that I use is much finer, but I want you to be able to see it. And then I just follow around. And then around the base of the flower, again, here's a little white spot. So I'm gonna highlight that a little bit. Highlighted one over there. And then you wanna follow the shape of your petal or the middle of your to give it some to ground it into the middle of that and this really you really see the difference when you start to put some put some lines at the base of these petals and again this is bigger than what I generally use. You can see the difference really a lot in that one. But again, this is just to me the fun part when you're kind of outlining your project after you've used the colored pencils or... Mom, I'm showing you the girls hibiscus. This is Sadie's that you guys did in Hawaii together. Yes, we put those on plaques and then Chelsea, Katie did a, um, what do you call that? Like a Mod Podge over it. It's called Glossy Effects. And it makes it shiny. So all we did was we used uh, a watercolor paper and then we cut them out. Then we cut out this hibiscus. And so let me show you the details on this. Got about nine more minutes. Um, I had a watercolor teacher that this is such a good tip. She said, when you're watercoloring, leave, she called it a vacation, leave a vacation there so that your colors don't run together. It'll keep the uh, petals separated and your project will look much better when you're finished. And even when you're doing the outline on that, don't uh, put your outlines together, have two separate lines. It does make a difference in the project. And even though in your mind you think, well, those petals sort of go against each other, um, it just looks better. I can't explain why. And then again, you're going to leave your whites, your white highlights makes a difference. They can be any shape. And again, 
around these leaves, just kind of. And you don't even need to follow your color directly. You can leave whites in the way you outline the leaf there. So then again, you're going to really ground these petals. This middle is going to be the dark. And if you're looking at this, this leaf is the, this petal is the closest. It would be the lightest. This petal is the furthest away from you. It's going to be the darkest. So I would put a lot of sort of creases in that. And then you can also put these creases at the top, anywhere you've got a little, so you just really want to drop that back, finishing off this stamen. You can kind of dot that up a little bit. There's been a request for you to hold up the entirely completed project. Oh, okay. That's a good thing to do that right now. So here we have here we have the whole project. And just one tip uh, as you color this or you color with your grandkids, you could make copies for your grandkids or your kids. And they can, uh, you have time to color right now. I have great memories of coloring with my mom. I was the oldest of four, and I was three when my brother came along. I can remember very vividly coloring with my mom. She was a very young mom, and I feel kind of like we grew up together. But uh, my tip is to, if you're left handed, start over on the left, start with your lightest color, and you want to put balance in your colors. So you'd want a little bit of yellow sort of all the way across. So start on the uh, left and come right. If you're left-handed and right, go left. Put in all your lightest colors first and then put in the probably the orange next. And I don't know why that works better, but then you're not uh, picking up and putting down your pencils a lot. You'll just use the yellow until you're done and then you'll use the orange all the way across, the blue all the way across. We didn't really do these um, sort of little tulip things, but they're pretty, pretty self-explanatory. I don't even know what they are, um, but they're just sort of made up ones. But again, this was my first color page project that I drew, and I'm just really happy that all of you have it and that you have Bev's verse on there. And so have fun with that. Uh, it's very relaxing to do that, sort of put some music on and spend time with the people in your life that are little that you love. And I think, is there any questions? Any questions? If you're right-handed and you go to the left, you'll go across what you did with your arm. If you're right-handed and you go to the left, yeah, it doesn't matter. It's just colored pencil or marker. Um, if you're using watercolor, you'll want to get off of it until your uh, paint dries. Um, but usually in Colorado, watercolor dries so fast. Um, you can, uh, in these little... I do think you said it backwards, because you said if you're right-handed, start on the right. Yes, and you go this way. But that's your left hand. Oh, that is my left hand. You all know what I mean, my other left. <laughs> so if you're right-handed, you want to start on the left and work your way right. If you're left-handed, you want to start on the left and work your way. Let me just show you this too. Um, while, my, while my yellow paint was still, it doesn't really show up there, but I dropped in a little bit of orange on the base and around here. It doesn't really show on the screen very well, but. Um, you'll want to do that while your yellow is still wet if you're using watercolor. So uh, just know that if you don't drop it in when it's wet, it's just going to look like a, you just placed a piece of orange paint on there and it won't, it won't blend in. So uh, I think that's all. Thanks for sticking with me. I can't believe all of you have stuck with me all this time. I wish I could 
chat with all of you. Sally, North Carolina, I can't believe. I don't know if Pam's in here from Arizona. Um, oh, great. So I love you, all of you. And I'm still here. Great. My two sisters and my daughter and my niece. Wow. That's from Seattle, Washington, all the way to North Carolina. Your family has grown exponentially out of control, Marlene. I don't know what happened with you. God family. has blessed us. Indeed, he has. You have uh, many arrows in your quiver. <laughs> yes, I'm very thankful for that. Yes. And my sisters are wonderful, too. Mrs. Yes. Short and Mrs. Ort. Yes. They're on there, too. Do you want to say hi, Joan and Marion? Marlene is my husband's Dutch sister. They're both <laughs> Dutch, and they want to tell us about that all the time, both of them. So, I still want Dan to learn Dutch so I can speak Dutch with them. Well, he can say some words, but we don't really want to hear them. <laughs> <laughs> I we understand. Yes, exactly. So this so fun. Been great. Yes, Pam, Thank hi, you. Oh, great job. Well, I, I hope you had fun. You're a good teacher. Thank you. Oh, look at that. That's great. That is impressive. Very nice. Good job. Yeah. Good job. It was and fun, Rochelle. It's a great uh -huh. teacher. Thank you. Again, hi, Pam. How hi, are Rochelle. That was fun. A great teacher. Thank you so much. Um, and look on the Camp Elam website, uh, Facebook page. They'll have a lot of resources there for you for later. But um, again, great to see all of you and have a great day. I've had a lot of coffee, so I'm going to sign out. Bye, okay. kids. Thank, Bye. thank you. Thank you.